Hi, this is TJ Chambers from SmokescreenDesign.com and today's video I want to just share a conversation that I had with a guy that was a hardcore believing in the globe a person believing all the signs, believe in NASA and another guy that is a pilot computer engineer uh, he's also done some work um, with satellites. I don't know if it's satellite engineering. Not, not exactly sure the detail of his satellite work, but he's knowledgeable about them. And there's more information coming uh, from him about about satellite that he's working on right now. And this guy is he's an older guy, so he's not uh, someone that's really young. Um, I don't remember how long he's been a pilot for, if it was 20 or 30 years or something. And so we just had a discussion about flying. Because as I shared in one of my previous videos about the Earth's rotation and flying from one point to another point, how is it possible that the Earth is rotating while the plane is flying? And to me, it's not possible. And I've got that idea originally from other people that have been discussing that topic of what it would look like if the Earth moves and the plane flies and just how either Earth is going away from where the plane is flying from that location or the Earth is, uh, the plane is moving towards so if you watch it all the videos see what I'm talking about how traveling from point A to point B how the plane is either moving towards that location and earth is moving towards that the where the plane is traveling or it's moving away so either the plane is rapidly approaching that location because the earth is moving towards or it is rapidly moving away from where the plane is trying to go and how the timing of the flights just don't match up. So this individual that seems to be an expert on the globe, an expert on uh, sailing and what can and can't be done around Australia, also seems to be an expert on flight computer equipment and instruments and also seems to be an expert on flying and what can and can't be done and how things work. But yet, this individual never sailed, never sailed around, especially around Australia where he claims certain anomalies would take place on a flat earth versus globe earth, and he's not a computer programmer, never piloted a plane, never used comp um, flight instruments. So then, this uh, gentleman that's the pilot, I started asking him uh, about flying. And so I asked him if he ever, as a pilot, flying a plane, did he ever have to take an account for the rotation of the earth since it would be moving and he's an object in the air. And he said, nope, never ever had to take in account for rotation of the Earth. So what about Coriolis effect? Have you ever had to take in account for Coriolis effects? Like, no, never had to, never. So what about when you went to school or whatever it is that you, however you learned to be a pilot, your training, did they ever teach you about that? Did they ever teach you about the effect of Coriolis effect or the rotation of the earth when you're flying and, you know it's mostly important when you're taking off and when you're landing and also when you're trying to reach your destination so I would think that this would be a really important thing that they should be teaching in school and training I said nope never ever did we learn about that was it ever part of training or anything never so that's interesting that if the Earth is rotating 
and there is the Coriolis effect and all this is just so important that when flying a plane that this would be taken into account but yet it's not so to me that's a big red flag for saying that the earth is not moving there is not a Coriolis effect it's not rotating and if it's not rotating then that means it cannot be round it cannot be a globe so then the expert individual said that the flight computers instruments are programmed to take an account for Coriolis effect take an account for the rotation of the earth so the pilot doesn't have to be worried about it kind of funny though because if that is true why weren't why wasn't this pilot ever taught that in school and so this pilot said mo absolutely not true absolutely not true that the computers instruments do not take into effect into account the Coriolis effect or rotation of the earth and if they did what math are they using for both of those and then the other guy mentioned how the wind has an effect it's like okay so the wind is a variable the wind is not constant it changes it can be still and it could also be moving very fast uh, he didn't give a number but I, I know that winds have been at 40 miles an hour or if there were hurricanes and whatever which you're not going to be landing in a hurricane but they can actually get up to over 100 miles an hour and as I mentioned in my previous video that when flying I flew a lot from Kansas City to Philadelphia Philadelphia to Kansas City nonstop flights and I know that the amount of time it took to go from Kansas City to Philadelphia was always shorter than the time they said it would take always and the flight back from Philadelphia to Kansas City it always takes longer than going the other direction now it actually should be shorter based on how the earth spins should be much shorter time and you have to see my other video to see what I'm talking about so there's for me as I continue to look into is the earth flat which does not mean that it's a pancake I don't know what people say that it's not flat like a piece of plywood because you can drive down the street depending on where you are and you can see the hills you can see valleys you might see mountains so the earth has depth if you go in the ocean I mean how deep does the ocean go it goes deep so we've got miles deep and we've got mountains that can go up miles high talking about above and below the sea level so we know that the earth has depth to it but that doesn't make it round that doesn't make it a sphere or as some scientists are saying now that oh the earth is pear shaped really so it kinda looks like this upside down light bulb then I mean that's that's pear shaped so this is all part of the process of looking for the truth about earth and going through the process and not just regurgitating some facts that someone else said unless that person has proven what they said to be true so for example this guy's a pilot never been trained for Coriolis never been trained for rotation of the earth it says instruments and computers do not take into account for either of those okay I can accept that as his um, expert information but this other guy that does not program does not program computer instruments or computers for airplanes has never flown as a pilot never been trained as a pilot he's just regurgitating information that someone else has said to try to prove his point well that can't be taken 
as credible because, well, now it's hearsay because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Or he says that if you try to travel around Australia, you'll run into the ice wall on a flat earth, but on a globe earth, you will, if you just keep headed in the same direction, you will actually travel around Australia. But yet he has never went by, went by boat. And he says, well, how is it then you can go in the same direction and not hit the ice wall? Well, he's never traveled by boat, so he doesn't know. He's coming up with claims of things he has no idea about. And that's what I'm trying to be careful with, too, is when looking at this, being able to look at things that are provable. So if we say, well, if I do this math and I take this formula and I do this and I do that and then point to this and that may prove something, but then it may also prove something false. So it's possible that if they have a formula that proves the sun is 93 million miles away, well, there probably also is a formula that proves that the sun is 3,000 miles away. So that doesn't make necessarily make either one true, but if I look at the sun, it doesn't look like it's any further away than the moon. And, but then they could claim that, oh, that's just an illusion. Okay, well, then it's just an illusion that the sun looks like it's 93 million miles away. Um, when they take, amateurs have flown uh, balloons with cameras up in space. They get up there and see the sun. The sun just looks really, really close. And it also looks like it's right above the earth at times. And we can see the hot spot is on the earth. And the sun is not at a distance away from the earth like it should be. It feels 93 million miles away. It's just way too close. And I can take that as an example of, okay, so that confirms what appears to really be happening. And just continue and grab in piece by piece of these of this different information, the different experiments that are going on and taking a look. And one of those formulas that helps in this process is with a circle. Since the not just a circle but a sphere, since the earth is supposed to be a sphere, then it has to curve at some point. Now it's a very large sphere, so it's at times difficult to measure or you know diff very difficult almost I'd say almost impossible to see the curve but with the formula we should be able to determine if there is curve and there are things that can be done like at a distance of X the curve should be this much which means that objects on that side of that distance should be below the curve and not visible and there's been proof that whole cities like Chicago or Toronto has been seen above this curve now once that happens then people say oh it's just a mirage it's just the image is reflecting through the water well if the image is reflecting through the water as someone pointed out, then why isn't that image watery? Why isn't it um, hazy? Why why is the image um, very clear? And that's why isn't it distorted? Because when you uh, have images reflecting through water, they tend to be distorted. I'm not saying that they, and especially because the water we're speaking of is not perfectly still. Maybe like at the Washington Monument or something like that where the water has the ability to be still because of all the trees that are close by and buildings and it's not out in a massive lake like Lake Michigan or over the near the ocean where it's wide open for wind to blow across and ships and boats to or you know ships probably aren't going to be in Lake Michigan but there will be boats out there um, where they can disturb the water and make it wavy. 
So these are just some things to think about and um, as soon as my, I'll uh, say my friend, I just met the guy, but we were having this discussion. As soon as he came in with his expert information, then all of a sudden this so-called expert, well, how can you refute that? He has no first-hand experience with any of those, and he had to change the subject to start talking about other things. So as um, you know, it was said by Eric Dubay, go with your own senses. What do you feel? What do things look like? What is your experience? And start to uh, take a look at that and see what you think. Does it match up with what we're being told? And Jaronism just put out a video today. I think, what is today? Today the 20th, I think. So he put out a video just showing the stars if if the earth moves around the sun and the sun is moving around the universe we should not be able to see the same stars all the time the stars should actually be changing so we shouldn't just be seeing just the big dipper the little dipper Orion in his belt and all these we should actually be seeing completely different stars all the time especially since we get on the other side of the sun which would blind out certain sections of space and we won't be able to see those stars so just some of those things to think about I don't want to keep rambling on because I've rambled on so much um, I wanted to make sure that I shared that and hopefully that you will join this quest and really take a look at really investigate is this earth really a globe or is it flat Take a look at the facts of what they're trying to say, and we will go from there, spreading the ultimate truth, because this will change everything. It really does change everything. And we're still learning what the implications are after this truth is brought out and changed. And one of those things, in the future, there is a fake alien invasion that is planned an alien invasion from outer space if the earth is flat that destroys so much information about space and then it begins to break down if there really is a life anywhere else and that will absolutely stop and destroy this fake alien invasion that's coming. And if you take a look at this picture of Earth, it's almost like the Earth that NASA has produced and put out, which is kind of sad because it's obviously this is fake, which shows that pretty close to what NASA produces, which I believe a lot of their stuff is fake as well, and there's evidence for images that NASA has faked. So plenty of things you can search on that to find out. But until next time, join the research with this to decide if the Earth is really a globe or if it's really a flat Earth.